I think it's extremely important for the American people to know that there can be the overthrow of a government, that there can be a coup d'etat in America, that that in fact did happen through the assassination of President Kennedy in order to prevent that kind of thing from happening again, in order to expose the forces that were responsible for that kind of murder and the kind of cover-up that has ensued in the following 25 years, it's necessary to expose it. Otherwise, we can have the same thing repeated again. Therefore, in the same fashion that we have exposed problems and scandals involved with Watergate, problems in Vietnam, problems in Central America, problems in the overthrow of governments elsewhere like Allende in Chile, and on and on and on, so must we expose that same kind of political assassination in our country. As painful as it may be, as uh, disruptive as it might be in a transitory nature, as embarrassing as it might be to certain individuals and organizations in the United States government, that has to be uncovered. If they were able to do it to John F. Kennedy then, they could do it to some other president in the future. Given the nature of the president's most powerful enemies at that time, and who had the most to gain from the assassination, my feeling is that there are four groups that are suspect. The more militarily uh, oriented of the anti-Castro Cubans, the people who felt betrayed by President Kennedy after the Bay of Pigs. Havana in the 1950s was like no other place in the world. Well known as a city of pleasure, it was actually a type of political and criminal free zone, a strange place where mobsters mixed freely with businessmen and politicians, most of them from America. At the center of this creative criminal energy was a former army general named Fulgencio Batista, a mulatto Cuban who took control of the country in 1952 and ran it with help from the mafia and the United States government. Batista fell, his military collapsed, uh, and the Castro forces walked into Havana largely uh, unresisted. Within his first year, Castro had taken over the U.S.-run telephone companies, had forced rate reductions from the electrical companies, had expropriated hundreds of thousands of acres from U.S. sugar and fruit companies, and had nationalized the oil refineries. Most dangerously, he had made a public pact with America's enemy, the Soviet Union, at once alienating the United States and thrusting his country smack in the middle of the Cold War. Soon after the elections, it became necessary to brief President-elect Kennedy on vital security matters. I was then director of the Central Intelligence Agency. And I remember meeting him in the Kennedy home in Palm Beach. For a full year, the Eisenhower administration had been planning an invasion of Cuba, using disenfranchised anti-Castro Cubans as their fighting force. In transferring power to Kennedy, the Eisenhower administration also transferred this secret plan. It became known as the Bay of Pigs. What? was done was that Dulles and Bissell planned, eventually planned the landing at the Bay of Pigs so that it would fail if in fact Kennedy didn't permit not only air support but major intervention, major ground forces, U.S. ground forces to, to become a part of it. And, and they never believed Kennedy wouldn't do that. When Kennedy didn't go along at the height of the crisis, the operation failed. And as a result of that, uh, Kennedy became totally disillusioned with the CIA. The Bay of Pigs was a serious and embarrassing failure for the Kennedy administration. After the Bay of Pigs, he was so annoyed with the CIA that he said that he'd like to rip the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the wind. On October 3rd of 1963, the New York Times reported that the CIA was, quote, a malignancy that the White House could not control. It went on to warn that if the United States ever experiences an attempt at a coup to overthrow the government, it will come from the CIA, 
the agency represents a tremendous power with total unaccountability to anyone, end quote. Kennedy did not dismantle the CIA. He did, however, try to control it and make it his own. He fired the key Eisenhower appointees, such as Director Alan Dulles, Deputy Director and Air Force General Charles P. Cable, and Deputy Director of Plans Richard Bissell. He felt it was an agency out of control. But Kennedy never truly brought the agency under control, and his defeat at the Bay of Pigs made him susceptible to a new and intense criticism. Developments in Red Cuba, 90 miles from the shores of Florida, hold more ominous warnings for a sleeping American public. While the deadly enemies of the American people close in for their final stages of encircling our nation, enemy nations within intensify efforts to chip away the foundations upon which American freedom rests. More and more strange voices call for surrendering of our national sovereignty to some type of world authority. There are increasing efforts to centralize authority in the federal government in Washington, D.C., under the guise of federal aid. Of all the defeats in the Cold War, the capture of Cuba by the communists is the most unacceptable. Kennedy tried to silence these critics by fighting the Cold War on their terms. He authorized a CIA covert action against Cuba, and he put his brother in charge of the operation. It became known as Operation Mongoose. And the only decent thing that came out of the whole Mongoose operation, the boys in Miami, where we had our base, uh, were able to recruit some little farmer or a peasant in Pinar del Rio province in the western part of Cuba. And he gave us a report, and all it said was, in an area bounded by four towns, is the only report that mentioned these four towns. And if you plot these four towns on a map and connect them up with a, a thin line, you'll see you get what, they, what became called a trapezoid, yeah, trapezoid area. And that's what targeted the U-2. That's what finally got the U-2 over that particular spot. And the rest, of course, is now history. The U-2 came back with the pictures and uh, we had the evidence we needed. Uh, Kennedy had the evidence he needed. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on the island of Cuba. The Cuban Missile Crisis was what the anti-Castro Cubans had dreamt about. They loved it. I mean, to them, this was the opportunity to finally get rid of Castro. They didn't seem to quite appreciate the fact that in the process they may have blown up the world. Uh, but if Castro could be disposed of, what the hell? The pressures to invade Cuba were persistent and intense. The anti-Castro Cubans wanted to reclaim their land. The radical right wanted to destroy communism. And individuals within the CIA saw this as an opportunity to avenge the Bay of Pigs fiasco. Kennedy refused to invade Cuba and was able to resolve the crisis peacefully. In doing so, Kennedy stood up to Khrushchev, but he also stood up against the radical right and the Joint Chiefs of Staff.